I've started planting the rafters for the cabin. These are 12 foot four by six yellow pine. I'm planting all four sides. So I'm gonna set you up over here and uh, we'll plane one of these. Anytime I get fresh timbers, before I do anything to them, I like to scrub them down with a wire brush. Any little bit of grit that's or gets in the in the pores there, it has a tendency to dull your tools. And these are fresh cut, and they're a little bit sticky, so stuff really does want to adhere to them, whether it be dust or just road grit or whatever in in hollow them. But I like to give them a good cleaning. And this will keep my planer blade sharper, longer. So just go down it. Give it a good scrubbing. And I really bear down with that wire brush. I put some what we call elbow grease in it. Okay, I've got it all scrubbed down. I'm gonna start planting on it now. I've got my big Makita planter here. We'll make her smooth. I like to check and see how square I am periodically. I like to keep these fairly square all the way around. I'm just checking it with my little small square here. And that looks pretty good. I'll get all of these planed, and then I'll come back and I'll pair them up together. Because what I'm going to do at the peak is cut a half lap. And uh, when I get, get these all planed up and I start cutting these out, I'll, I'll try to my best to explain how I'm doing that. But what happens is each rafter supports the other one at the peak. I won't be putting a ridge or a ridge pole, as some people call them. The rafters will be one side will support the other and they'll be pegged together at the peak. It's a pretty traditional knot. I've heard this uh, angle called a pinion angle and I'll mention that a little bit later on when I get started uh, cutting these for the length and getting the seat cuts and the tails cut and, and everything ready to go. I'm cutting out the rafters now. You can see we've got two sets here, two pairs. These are the barge rafters. They are the rafters that go on the outside of the building at the end of the top plate logs and I marked them D wall and B wall barge. Some people call these a, a fly rafter. I've always called it a barge rafter, but I'm half lapping these the way this works. This shoulder right here will support this shoulder. The rafters actually lean against each other at the peak and it makes a, a good strong connection. After I get these up there, I'll peg these together and uh, that's where they'll stay. These are the gable rafters. They'll set right on top of the B wall and D wall. Now what I've done on the barge rafters and the gable rafters, I picked out eight of the straightest uh, four by sixes that I had. And that's the ones that I wanted to use in those areas. When you're doing your rafters, you're gonna have to know how long to cut them. And there's different ways of coming up with that length. You can step them off with a framing square. Uh, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is A square plus B square equals C square. Now, I don't do that. That's too many letters and too many squares. So actually I use a calculator, construction calculator, but I have my daddy's old rafter book that he used for many years. And this book is pretty tattered and worn, but it's got all of the, uh, the different pitches and I am doing a 12-12 uh, pitch roof which I like to use when I have a loft because that gives me a little bit more headroom in the center. But 12-12 is an easy pitch to cut. Your seat cut is just 45 degree angles when you mark it out and the peak since I am doing a half lap it's just a square cut. It's real, real simple and my tails I'm just doing a square cut on them also. That's the part that hangs over the, the end of the top plate. But some people have, uh, you know, stayed with the old rule of using a frame and square. And I'm just gonna slide this back a little bit and turn it over. <coughs> Got a little weight to it. And I have these buttons on here. It's actually what I use when I'm doing a stairway. And I've got it set on 12 on the short leg and 12 on the long leg, and it lets me just slide that up there 
and I can just keep it there real real easy and I'm making just a little bitty mark here and here and I'm stepping that off set right back on the 12 and on on down through there just make a little mark and then just line this this end of it the short leg with the with your little mark and since this building is 12 feet wide half the width of that is uh, six feet so in a 12 12 pitch roof for every 12 inches that you come in horizontal you actually have that much rise so whatever pitch if you're doing a, a 8 12 for every 12 inches you come in you would be actually having an 8 inch rise and so you could just step off down through there and uh, you would mark it six times down through there and that's going to get you pretty close to it on down your the length of your rafter and that will let you know where to cut that you make a, a mark on the on the framing square I'm not going to mark that but just down through there and you can you can get your first rafter length and then you can measure them from there on and you'll have it pretty pretty close but I've used a, a calculator to determine mine and it's right on what the the, the little book says and it's uh, eight feet five and seven eighths inches from the very peak the exact peak down to where the seat cut would be my rafter length from the tip or the very top of it to where I'll cut a seat cut will be eight feet five and seven eighths of an inch. I'm going to show you how I cut these. I just start off by laying my square up here and I make a mark across just a square square mark and I transfer that down on one side or the other. I could put it on this side or this side just happen to be I'll just mark this side here and then I'll cut this off. I'll go ahead and mark this right here so you can see it. And I work these rafters in pairs. And I'll show you here in just a, a little bit why I do that. But the first order of business would be, would be for me to cut that off on that line. That's just a square cut. I have here my newest addition to my tool family. This was brought to me by dear friend Lee and Lee I want to say thank you brother I appreciate it I have another one it's a, a Ryobi this is actually a skill saw worm drive the other one is quite a bit heavier than than this one and I like this one because of, of the weight it's quite a bit lighter and it does a really good job cutting so Lee thank you buddy it's nice and square Okay, that cut nice and square and I'm happy with that now you don't have to buy one of those big saws I'm not suggesting that at all you can actually cut this with a skill saw and just mark it and cut it from both sides and come up with the same thing that just cuts it all one pass and it's nice and smooth or you can score that if you want to and and cut it with a chainsaw which I've done now I had marked top on these you always want to look down the length of it and if it's got a, a hump in it a crown we call it you always want to put that up let it be on the top then I've got this cut I can uh, mark the length of it the first mark will be the seat cut which is five foot eight and seven eighths make a mark on the top and I'm going to come on down and I'm marking 11 foot three and three quarters from this, this where the seat cut is and the tail mm -hmm. that will hang out uh, past the building. I wanted a two feet overhang on the rafter tail. So the total length of that, whether I stepped it off, figured it with a calculator or did the Pythagorean theorem or however I came up with the length, that is my length, my total length. And I'm just making a mark on the top I'll go ahead and mark both of them since I do want to mark, uh, work these in a pair. And I'm just taking my framing square 
making a mark all the way across the top of this. And on the tail, I'll go ahead and mark where I'll actually cut it on the end. And I'll use the big saw for it. I'm going to write a number four. This is going to be, this is not the fourth pair I've done, but it's, it's the way I'm numbering these so that I can keep these two rafters together. I'm using a, a template. It's just a piece of three quarter inch plywood with a little catch piece on the top to where I can use it on both sides of the rafter. And my uh, the seat cut, this part right here, it's just a, on a 12-12, it's, you can set a square in there, and it's just a 90 degree, so each angle here is a 45, which comes up to 90. And on the top of it, I have a mark already established that lines up all the way down to the, uh, I'm not sure you can actually see that the way I'm holding the square, but it lines up with the, the back side of the seat cut, which is actually the outside edge of the top plate. Now what I'm doing, since I have this mark and I have my mark already established on the top, the length of it, I'm lining those two marks up. Make sure I've got that up against there and I can take my pencil and mark that seat. That's what will actually cut out. Go ahead and get this one. It lined up good. It's a good idea to do all of your layout before you start doing any cut because if you get something wrong, you have a chance to correct it before you get too far. Now I can establish my other side of the seat cut on both of these. I can stand these up and I'll connect these lines from here across because I'm going to cut this with a chainsaw and I always like to score my lines that I'm cutting with a chainsaw. Just mark that across there and I'll do that on this one and this I'll score these lines and then I'll cut that uh, with my chainsaw. This mark here is the total length of 11 feet 3 and 3 quarters. You might be able to see this mark here it's just a 45 off of this. I just took my speed square and marked an inch and a half and then made this mark here. This is strictly four looks right here and we'll be doing some other things that that you can do or you don't have to do you don't have to do this it's not something that's necessary it's just something that i thought i'd show and, and cut these this way just to show you what you can do with a it just seems like a a simple four by six timber but you can spruce it up a little bit and uh, really make it look nice so i'll cut these two pieces here and cut this little 45 on the bottom This gives that a little nice detail there. Okay, we're back at the peak, the top of the rafter. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure the thickness of each each of these. They're pretty close together. Uh, this one's measuring like four inches and a sixteenth. So what I'm gonna do is come in from one side or the other, a little over two inches, two inches and a thirty-second. And I'm gonna draw a line down the top of that connect those little points together. Now what I'm going to do is cut off of this side and I'll do the same thing here. This is just a little bit thicker, about a sixteenth. I'll mark it two and a sixteenth. And mark that. And I'm going to make a little mark on the end so that I can find it. Now what I'm going to do, make sure I get that marked on the side that I'm going to cut that on. I'm going to measure the width of this or the depth of it right here. And that is just about exactly six inches. So what I'm going to do is come back from the end of this and I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. And mark that at six inches. Now I'm going to measure the the width of this one and it's six and sixteenth a little bit heavy so I'm going to mark this one six and sixteenth just a little bit heavy 
I'll take my square and square that all the way across. Now the reason I measured the width of this and transferred it to here and the width of this and transferred it to here, let me stand this up. This rafter here will actually swing around and set here. So what I cut out right here and what I cut out here, that will come right in this area here. So I'll go ahead and mark that across to my halfway mark. Get over here where I can see it. Just transfer that down right there. And so I have the top marked. Okay, I can turn this over, put the bottom side up. Now my cutout's gonna be on this side. Now, measure that again, just to be sure. Taking half of the width of it. I can take my square and I can transfer my cutout mark all the way down to this line right here. Now since I'm going to cut this with a skills or a chainsaw, I'm going to score all of these marks here and I'll connect this together. So it gives me something to aim at with a chainsaw. Now you want to be sure that when you lay these out on these peaks that you take your wood off the same side. One, you can do one side or the other, but make sure you take it off the same side. Otherwise you'll have two that are just alike and they won't match up at the peak. But I'll go ahead and score this. If you remember back in my earlier videos, when I'm scoring with a utility knife, I just cover the line up and I always score on the waste side, the side that's gonna be, or the part that's gonna be cut out. Now I'll score this all the way around before I cut it. Now I've told you that I'm, I'll cut this out with a chainsaw but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can take a skill saw and uh, just set it at the right depth and just make a series of cuts straight across and then just knock those little pieces out and clean it up. Since I scored this all the way around, I can come back with my chisel and start cleaning that up. When I'm doing something like this, I always like to do the end grain first before I do this grain here because if I cleaned this all out and then came back with a chisel and started paring this down, I'm actually cutting back into what I've already cleaned up. So there's a little bit of wood here. I stayed away from the line just a little bit and that will kind of protect that. Every time you cut into this, this part here, when you're coming down on the end grain, you actually minutely, you start to weaken this. So it's best to do the end grain first and then come back and clean this all up. So what I'm doing, I'm doing a little bit of an undercut here. And I'm not cleaning this line up across here until after I get this undercut done because I don't want to crush my line out. I think I'd covered that also on when I was cutting the pockets for the floor joist. You don't want to crush back on this line because you want something that's real nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first. Do my undercut. When I'm talking about the undercut across here, I'm gonna leave this right on the line. And when I put the other half of the, the rafter together, I may wanna make a silky saw pass between here and here and here to get a good fit there. So that's why I'm giving myself just a little bit of undercut here. And check it. Then I'll come back and clean up to the line. You want your chisels to really be sharp when you're doing this. I'm just going right along that score mark. I 
Just using my slick, clean this up here. Down to the score lines that I made on the on the top and the bottom. And I'm giving this just about a 30 second of an inch of undercut from here to here. Just just a very, very little bit. So when this this rafter here mates up to it, it'll be touching here and here. And I'll clamp it when I put the peg in through there. Ready now to do the seat cut. I had already went ahead and scored my lines here, but I'm gonna clean up the seat cut now. Just taking a sharp chisel. Some people call this a bird's mouth, or actually a lot of people do. I've always referred to it as the seat cut, right down to my score line. Always like to check it. I want to anchor these rafters down to the top plate logs with a half inch lag bolt. And I like to drill right straight through into uh, the seat cut right where the corner of the top plate would be right here and I'm just taking my speed square and I'm just setting that kind of at the the point of this cutout and making a little mark across the top just kind of getting the center and that that is about four and an eighth so I'm going to mark this at two and a sixteenth and I'll probably use a seven or eight inch lag bolt which was will go through here and I'll get a good depth of holding power on the uh, on the top plate. I'm going to countersink here on my mark that I made the depth of the washer and the head of the lag bolt. I'm going to swap the bit out and have a long shanked half inch bit. And I want to make sure that I drill right straight through and come out as close to this point as possible. So what I do, I use a, set my speed square up here and start my hole. And I just slide that up there and that gives me something to sight so that I know that I'm drilling perpendicular with the rafter and hopefully come out pretty close to the center of my seat cut. And I'm going to side it this way to make sure I'm kind of right there. At this point, this rafter is ready to set. But I'm going to go a couple of steps further with it. I'm going to cut a groove right down through here with my router. And I'll get set up and show you that and the reason for doing that. I've got a piece of three-quarter inch plywood with a couple catchers on the top like I do my seat cut pattern. This is on a 45 which is 1212 and I'm holding it back two and a half inches from where the uh, outside of the seat cut is. This would be the outside of the plate and the reason I've held it back two and a half inches is because the cutter blade on my router is two and a half inches from the outside edge. Now I'm using a three quarter inch bit which will allow me to put a, a one by down in this groove. So I'm set up at two and a half inches from the line that I drew on here in the outside of the, the plate log. As I go down this, I'm gonna keep it pushed up tight against my piece of plywood there. I've got this screwed down where it can't shift on me or move. Because if you bobble with it in doing something like this, you're gonna mess your groove up that you're cutting your little dado. Now I'll clean these little frazzles up, but I just wanted to show you, I've got a piece of, of plywood here, and when this rafter is setting up on top of the building, I can slide a piece of one by down there, and that will block any wind or air or birds or 
bugs or whatever from coming through to the inside. Some people call it a freeze block, some people call it snow blocking, and I'll put these in before I deck it so that uh, I can put every, do everything from the top side and not have to go on the outside of the building and try to push this up. I can just slide it down from the top. Now I'm cutting that groove or that dado on both sides of the rafter. Uh, the only rafter pairs that I didn't do this on are the barge rafters that are out away from anything. They're out kind of by themselves. Another detail I like to do on these ends and where I clip the, the bottom corner, I like to chamfer that and I'm just using my block plane set kind of light. Just holding my block plane up there at kind of a 45 degree. And that gives that, that tail end just a little bit of a detail. You don't have to do that. It's just something I like to do on the ends of the, the rafter. Showing you one more detail that I'm doing to these rafters. This is not something that's necessary. It is strictly for looks. I've, I've put a chamfer on the bottom side of the, of the rafter. This is going to be exposed. It'll all be seen. I set my router to where I'm a half inch in what is actually cut out from here to here. But I'm using two different routers, one to cut the groove here with that three quarter inch uh, dado bit. And then I have a three quarter inch chamfer bit that I'm using here. So we'll go over here and we'll lay this out and I'll show you how I'm doing that. Okay, I'm just using my little steel ruler and I'm coming down from the shoulder cutout four inches at the top. I'm taking my little square and just marking that back and forth there on both sides. And down here at the seat cut, I came down four at the top and I'm coming up six inches from the inside corner on the seat mm -hmm. cut and I'm making a mark at six inches and squaring that across. So I have these marks on both sides. And on the tail that's hanging over the outside of the plate, I'm coming down four inches from the, from the outside of the seat cut cut out. And from down here where the bevel is, I'm coming up four inches and making a mark. And that will be where I start and stop my router. That gives that a nice profile. You have a nice crisp corner and then down a little ways from the top, you have a, a nice chamfer. It's just a nice detail to look at. I'm going to go ahead and put anchor seal on the seat cut on both faces of it or both cutouts and down here on the end of the rafter and up there at the half lap. Appreciate you watching this, and if you haven't, I'd like for you to subscribe to our channel. Hit the little bell for the notifications so you can see when our next video comes out. Thank you very much, and God bless.